Uh, like John said, my name's Jack. I do belong to this club. At least I think. Well, I got to pay my dues you again. Paid up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you weren't paid up with you? <laughs> we. Uh, I. I love spiral turning. Um, and anything that I do tonight, feel free to try it, copy it, do anything you want. Um, you know, I know we have some people out there that's afraid that you're stealing their ideas and everything, but the way I look at it, a long, long time ago, people were turning bold before we can even think about it, and so you're not stealing anybody's idea. Um, one of the things I'm going to show tonight is, is this spiral turning here. This is Ebony and Holly. The one I'm going to do tonight, just so we can see it better, is going to be Holly with uh, black walnut down the middle of it. But uh, you can spiral anything. Um, this is all done by hand. This is just the same thing, only done two of them one direction, two of them the other direction. And uh, here's a kaleidoscope that I did some spiraling on it. I was trying to get a vessel done, but uh, didn't get it done in time. But uh, I'll show you the technique on how to do it. One of the when you make these goblets, you're actually making them in three pieces. I'm turning the, the bowl part, putting a little tenon on it, parting it off, turning the base, putting a little tenon on it, partially uh, parting it off, and I stop right there. Then the piece that's in the middle, I'll drill the piece, glue the wood that you're going to use, contrasting wood in the middle of it, and then I'll turn this down part way, and then we just end up gluing everything back together, finish turning it, and then we do the spiral. One of the things that people have a lot of trouble with is when they're drilling that hole, getting it straight down the middle. I'll show you how I do it. I'm not saying it's the most, the biggest and best way to do it, but I have good luck with it. So that's what we're going to do first to drill this. All I got is just the center marked on this piece of holly. And I drill it right on the lathe. This is the way I drill my pin blanks. This is the way I drill everything is right on the lathe. So I'll put that in there. Put the center on it. To get this thing centered as best as we can, and then lock it down good. Now the very important thing is you gotta drill it at low speed and you gotta continuously clean the bit. Did you check, did you get that Bob? Low speed. <laughs> Bob's one of my. Is that one speed, Bob? <laughs> Bob's one of my students that just was at my place a couple months ago, and he's big time into it now. And not to tell on him, but he uh, just chucked his chuck, chuck <laughs> off the lathe and everything else. I hate that. <laughs> when I when I drill my stuff. If it's a short piece, I don't use a, a center drill to start out with. But this is just a little center drill that I'm just going to start the hole, and then I'll switch to a regular quarter inch drill bit. Then I'm going to switch to the long drill bit, okay, to get through this. And you see it goes very quick if I get the thing in there. Now, I usually drill slower than that, but just as slow as this one will go, I think.
all that bed does is just, oh, sorry about that. All that bed does is just gets a nice starter hole for you. You also got to look at the kind of wood that you're drilling. Because, uh, You gotta look at the wood you're drilling because uh, the grain in the wood will tend to get that bit going off to the side and I'm sure everybody has drilled stuff and came out through the side or came close to the edge. Um, look at the grain in the wood and the other thing that's a possibility is, is it's uh, like a chainsaw or a bandsaw or anything else. If the bit gets dull on one side versus the other side, or if you tried to resharpen your bits and you resharpened it cattywampus or something to where one side is a little bit bigger than the other, the drill bit's going to walk. So it's got to be it's got to be a good drill bit. I can do this with mine, but. After I get it started good, I just keep cleaning it out. Shoving it through. The other thing that helps quite a bit is, is especially on the long one, is if you wax it as it's going in. notice, I mean, I'm going to end up with about a half inch round piece when I get done. And I actually started out with about inch square of stock. So I got a little bit to play with. Can you, uh, can you go for me? Can you meet it at the other end? Can you go halfway through and then? No, no, no. Okay. You don't want to do that. Um, I mean, it's possible but what you got to think about is if you're off at all, let's say it starts to walk out to one side and you start the other end, even if you can find that other point, it's basically going to be a curve when you get done with it and your piece in the middle, even if you get it in there, your contrasting wood, it's going to be closer to one edge than the other and when you try spire on it, you're going to see it right away. to, uh, there we go. Now we'll see how good we did. What size is that one you're selling right here? That's quarter inch. You can, any of the wood that you put down the middle, you do any size you want. Um, I like quarter inch because I like a, a smaller stem on my stuff. Um, not too bad. I'm just off of the center mark when I got through. Sure. Now, <laughs> it's Holly. Holly, it works good. Holly is real good. Now you can do one of two things. Um, you could turn down the contrasting wood that you want down the middle, or you can do like I did, just go buy a piece of walnut dowel rod. But the wood that goes down the middle of this, now this is quarter inch dowel and it's going to be awful tight going in there. You do not want it tight. You've got to have some play around there to get the glue around it because if you don't, when you start spiraling it, all the spirals will come off. So you got to have like a 64th or 32nd space all the way around that thing. Uh, a good way to tell if you got enough space around it is when you put the glue in there, you should be able to put a bunch of glue down in there and shove this in with this setting down on something solid and it'll actually push the glue back up around the outside of it. So you got to have enough space for that glue to come up, else it won't work. It won't work good, put it that way. How do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Somebody told him. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah somebody yeah. told me that. Yeah. Okay, do uh, so we don't have to watch glue dry. I got a piece <laughs> down here. <laughs> By the way, what I did with these, I took another drill bit that's about a 64th bigger and drilled these out just a little bit larger and the wood slides in there good then. Okay, let me switch this over. Yeah. <coughs> All I'm going to do is turn a taper on this so I can uh, I'll turn the taper on it so one end will go on here, the taper on the other end will go on here, and then we'll turn this around. What did I do with it? I got a tool rest lining here someplace. I heard that burn. I do that all the time. I set something down and I waste more time. <laughs> and the older we get? Like I said, we could go through and glue this on right now with the top and the bottom, but you're just adding extra stress to your other pieces. So you might as well just turn this down, get a little round before we put it together. I don't know if uh, I don't know if all you guys have ever, or if any of you guys have turned holly, but if anybody wants to give you some holly, take it. Take it. Mr. Rowland got me hooked on this stuff, and it's it's great to turn. take this down and then what we're going to do is, is we're going to put this back in the lathe 
Um, I made a piece and to go in my tailstock. And I can put the cup inside here. So that'll fit in there. No, you're not putting that much pressure on. All I'm doing is holding this in place while it dries. So I'm putting this on the menu. I think it is an input. Let's go in. Let's go. What is your cup? Is that cherry? This is all. Let's see the cup there. Yeah. This? I don't know. Something just handed me. Okay. Side right there. Hit it. Oh, that, that's right. That's that's right. Come Basically, all we're doing is, is putting glue on that. I would have turned that center down a little more. Put the glue on. Run this up to it. Turn this real slow because it could be off just a little bit. And get it as square to it as you can. Is that Teflon? Yeah, it's Teflon. But just get it as square as you can and let it set. Well, it's plastic. It's white. Yeah, it's white. It doesn't matter. You can make one out of wood. You can make it out of anything. But all it is is just to hold that cup into place, let it set up, let it dry, and we're going to end up with... Jack, you don't square that off. The ends? Yeah, I square them off, but I most of the time uh, I can square them before I turn them. But I'm going to end up with a piece like this after it's dry. Okay? And that's what we're going to start spiraling as soon as I turn it down just a little bit more. I have a question here, Jack, from this young lady. You can spiral it before you put it together. Is that what you ask? Yes. Yeah. You can spiral. I got good ears. You can spiral it before you put it together, but it's a possibility you could be off just a little bit with it. And it didn't work. I mean, you can do it before you get it together, but trying to blend it in and everything else. The little design on the end of it to blend it into the cup so it looks like one full piece. Okay. That's a little more difficult to do. Okay. That one there, actually, we was just at a show, like I said, at the mall. We was uh, doing stuff for hospice. And I packed all my stuff up and brought it home. And I had actually broke that one in two. And uh, so I went out and gingerly took it back apart. And Made a new piece for it and put it back together. So you can do it. Yeah, craftsmanship is all about the place for what you can fix. That's right. Turn a little design on each end of this down to about a half inch. And then the center I'm going to take down to about three-eighths of an inch, and then we're going to start laying it out the spire on it. If I can do this without screwing it up. We notice you brought spare.
I didn't want to do too much actual turning because the turning is not the difficult part. Because everybody here is an expert turner. The difficult part is the spiraling. You can have as many as you want, but when you get into something this small, uh, you can have too many. And what we're going to do first is we're going to index this, and all we got to do is just go off the chuck if you want. We got four jaws in the chuck, so if we line it up, we can just draw the line down it. And basically, what I'm going to do to begin with, I'm going to draw four lines down this thing. 
So I got it lined up with one of the jaws on the chuck. I'm going to draw a line. You'll see him in just a second. Where'd I put that? And I'm hoping you can see them lines back there. That's the reason I used Holly. Okay, we got four lines, right? Now, the person that actually that I watched doing this is Stuart Mortimer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stuart Mortimer, and he came up with calculations and everything else, and I don't know if he was trying to confuse me or what, but it's easy. Now all you got to do is get a beginning. We're going to have our beginning about right in there, and the end we're going to have down here someplace. Now to get a spiral to where it does one complete spiral, it's going to take four segments or four pieces, right, to go all the way around. So if I, if I want that to do a nice smooth spiral, and you don't have to measure this, but some people are anal where they will, is just go down here and whatever the thickness of this is, that's what I'm spacing it out at. So I'm just going to go through here, one there, one there, just go on down. All right, got my spirals down there. Now this is the real difficult part. Connect the dots. Go from corner to corner. Now after you do this a couple times, you don't even draw the lines. But all you do is, like I said, uh, most of the time I don't even draw these lines unless I'm doing a demo like this just to show the people. <coughs> because all you got to do is go from corner to corner in them boxes. There's one more. Just like scoring bowling. Yep. <laughs> That's our mark for our spiral going around there and that'll spiral all the way down. Now if you want a reverse one like this uh, Osage orange, orange is there, I'll do it down here. Is you just mark the, you mark every other one going one direction. Then you mark the other ones the other direction. And that's going to give you your diamond effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little safety thing here. What I'm going to use now Mark or to, to the find them too there. <laughs> never, never use a file without a file handle on it. Now I'm gonna, not going to turn the lathe on, but if for some reason you catch the lathe on or something like that, and that thing catches, it's going to go right into your hand. So always have a file handle on a file. This file is a rasp. And I got a new one setting here, and I'll pass this around. I get I get them down at Woodcraft, and they're 650 prices on it yet. But this is what you start out with: is this this rasp? <coughs> Give me that. Now, if you know the old thing about tapping the top of your head and rubbing your belly at the same time to see if you can do it, 
you basically got to be able to do it because you got one hand going this way and the other hand going this way when you do this. We're in trouble. <laughs> but all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start with this file, start to get the, the lines in there. <coughs> so I'm just going to go across. When I do the first one, or when I do the, when I start out, I just barely mark it, just enough to where that file will lead. Now I'm not going to do this whole thing because it takes, a, well I can do the whole thing in about a half hour, but you don't need to sit here and watch me file, but I'll get, you, get it going to where you can see. And then, uh, then start the next one. In fact, when I do this, I actually got a stool that I put up the lathe, and I just sit there and listen to music and sing at times and just keep filing. You're not going to do that, are you? <laughs> no. I'll keep you from that. Why a rasp instead of a, just a typical rat tail? Because you, it'll take way too long to do it. Okay. If you get this rasp, uh, one of the other things is, is when you're spiraling down this, at times you start seeing them, you may be off just a little bit, so you might start seeing one spot wider and one part narrower, where you just kind of work the rasp to one side or the other to do that. Even now. Okay, now that I got them started, only I would have went all the way down with them. You go back and you start going a little bit deeper with them. And what we want to do, we want to go deep enough to where we just start to see the brown. We don't want to go any deeper than that, just start to see the brown. And it's best if you don't, if you take them down together. Uh, in other words, don't cut one all the way down and then go back and do the other ones because you can snap the thing in two. And yes, I know that from experience, Vern. <laughs> At times, I'll even, it's all according to the type of wood I'm using, but at times I'll even number the spirals up here, one, two, three, four, or how many I'm doing, because some of the wood is hard to tell if you've done it the second time and stuff like that. Some of the wood is, ebony is a good one. It's hard to tell that you've already done that one, so I always number them. By the way, I will take this home and finish it, and next month it'll be in the drawing. Cool. Thank you. Now, if you see, I'm just starting to see some brown right there. You, yeah, can you see it, it out there? I can see it from here. One of the other things you want to be careful with is, is doing real short strokes with this because you're down here in this real small part of the rasp and you want to get up here into the fatter part once you get down in there. So you need to start taking some longer strokes. And don't worry about getting this in completely even and everything else. That's the last thing you do is come back here and even this end out because it'll drive you nuts if you try to do it 
at the same time you're trying to get this other stuff done. Get all these ends completely even. Just start it a little short of what you're going to end up with and then you can come back and even them out afterwards. What's that? You're going to use just that one file rasp for the whole no. thing? No. 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 Okay. I'm just trying to get this down to where we're just starting to see that brown. By the way, a little plug for myself. I just got my website up and running if anybody wants to visit it. But. I have some of my cards up here, but it's towncreekturning.com. Okay, thank you. Shameless plug. Shameless. Good. Shameless, not good. Thank you. We love you, Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel a little. That's somebody said. I don't know if you can see it out there or not, but you can see this thing flexing pretty good. So, like I said, you got to be... <laughs> okay, just a little bit more on this one. But that's... The, you would start it out and go down in like that. Then the next file you use is nothing more than a chainsaw file. Good, got one of them. Now, hi there. Hello! <laughs> now most of your chainsaw files, about the last half inch is, doesn't have any teeth on it or file on it or whatever you want to call it. It's best if you break that off, put it in a vise and snap it off and then go through and make sure there's no sharp edges down here grind it off make it round on the end or whatever mainly because when you're getting down here at the end if you go a little bit too far and there's a sharp edge you dig into this bottom mm, yeah. okay so it's just one of those little things that i found out your if you get your, uh, you get your uh, files at uh at harbor freight then you just twist them off twist off the end yeah I mean, you just twist off the end now all you do now on this this is going to smooth out all the file marks. Another little hint, before you start doing this, sweep up real good around your lathe and make sure there's no shavings laying around your lathe. They're as little as possible. Take an air hose, blow them away, whatever. Because if you're sitting here filing and you pop one of these little ribs off, it's easier to find on the floor and you can glue it back in with a little super glue and you won't even know it's been gone. Mm -hmm. But if it's full of shavings, they're very difficult to find. You learn a lot when you're doing these. Where's your shop, John? I live by uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway. So we're about an hour from here.
it's Josh. It's the same thing. I'm only French. Our comedian back there, Jerry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My legal name is Jean. My legal name is Jackie Butch. I was named after Jackie Butch Robinson, the baseball player. Okay. Oh, oh. Nice. Well. Jacques yeah. Now Jerry started calling me Jacques Boucher. So. But anyway, you can see how that's going to end up, and you just keep going on it, and that'll spiral right on down. And like I says, it'll end up. There you go. Pass that one around. It'll end up like that when you get done with it. I bet you could do a lead screw like that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, get completely done with it before you put the finish on it. The other thing you got to be careful with. Oh yeah, I'm gonna sand it. Uh, the other thing you got to be careful with is if you're using a lighter wood like that holly underneath it, make sure that you take a, a, a tack cloth or something before you put any finish on that and make sure you get, especially if you're doing ebony, because that little ebony powder will get into that holly and it turns it darker. So you want to try to get that as clean as possible before you spray any finish on it. And... Uh, then you go through and put your finish on. Now that's just got spray lacquer on it. The other thing you do to help sand this, just rip off a bunch of strips of sandpaper and I just got a tie wrap around it here. But then you can just go through and just like you're polishing shoes. And it'll get down in there and It'll sand them. And you don't want to do that under power? No. <laughs> you can do it. I'm new here. You can do it, but only once. Only once. <laughs> Come on now, you've been telling me that for a year that, that you're new here. <laughs> I've done three demos here and you told me that all three times. Find a new light now. <laughs> But that's how you go through and you sand it. Um, again, if you're if you're filing this and you happen to see something move just a little bit, stop. Make sure all the dust is off of it. Put a little bit of thin CA glue on it and then go back to filing. But the important thing is is to make sure you get all that dust off there first because if you don't, it'll discolor your pieces and you can't get it back again. But we're going to press on and. Spiral something else. Go take a little five minute break. We'll do the raffle. Go ahead. Spiral this. Why not? Because wood like this, you don't spiral, but I'm going to show you how to lay it out on here. Uh, basically, all I did was this is a, a 12 segment indexer that I made real quick today. I just drilled a, hat, or a one inch hole in it which won't work on this one because of the motor. Didn't even think of that. Hang on, I can fix it real quick. Where's your bandsaw? <laughs> Back corner. Get right. I'm gonna say a larger figure. This fits my other lay, this is an inch and quarter hole, but all I did was just divide it out in 12 equal segments so you can do a four, a six, or 12, right? Four, six, or 12. But, I'm going to mark on this with chalk because it shows up good and like I said this is going to be sanded and by the way I turned this, this was a green piece and this is kind of an experimental piece. Uh, I did an ingrain turning, it was green wood when I started and I took a five gallon bucket and put 50-50 of, of uh, boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits and uh, put it in there and just left to soak for about three weeks, two to three weeks. I don't have any cracking on it at all. It's been out drying for a couple days now. But uh, I don't have any cracking on it. I'm just trying to see if I can keep it from cracking by doing that. Now I might put it back in it and let it soak some more. And uh, basically, 
and I'm sure most of you guys know, guys and gals, uh, the only reason the wood cracks is because the cells that's in there is collapsing and uh, from the water leaving the wood. And uh, so if you can get something to displace or to keep themselves from cracking or collapsing, that should keep your wood from cracking. So I'm hoping the boiled linseed oil and the mineral spirits will do that. So Where, where do you get uh, boiled linseed oil in that quantities? Just yeah, a gallon can, Lowe's, any place. Oh, okay. Paint store. Yeah, paint right. store, Lowe's, any place. Okay. But you can go down to Woodcraft, you can spend, well, Jerry just bought five gallons of it. How much is that five gallon bucket of stuff you bought? Yeah. A gallon. A gallon. Now what is that called? Pentacryl. Oh, Pentacryl. But I had uh, probably about $30 in four gallons of it when I got done. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't... Well, at the Charlotte Winters, they talked, uh, they talked about that too. Somebody did that same thing. Yeah, Bruce Lacey and uh, who was the other one? Somebody else did it too. But anyway, I'm going to lay this out. Basically, all I'm going to do is take and turn this and draw some lines on it, and I'm just lining it up with the tool rest. Okay, the different lines on there. Oh, break the chalk right away. The reason I want to, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you one other thing. Nice and sporting. Nice sporting. Did you mention what kind of wood that is? This is ambrosia maple. And this piece, I think I'm going to finish it off by putting a uh, uh, black walnut or something cap on here to make this a little bit smaller and then put a finial off it when I get done. Let me extend these lines real quick. How many lines you got there? I got 12 on this one. Uh, you can do any amount of lines you want. But when you get into a curb piece, I missed one. Yes. Keep going. Keep going. It's over here. Over here. Right there by your thumb. Like On top. That's okay. We'll just guess that. <coughs> Okay, now if I go and put some lines around this, okay, and I'm just guessing at the distance. You can measure it out and be perfect with it and but the thing I want to show you is, is if I start connecting these dots now, it's going to spiral on around, okay? Mm -hmm. But if I divide these lines up again, you end up with a more gradual curve mm -hmm. than this one. So what I'm saying is, is that let's say you got a, a vessel that uh, is just the opposite of this one. Let's say this is the bottom, this is the top. You could have them lines closer together at to the top, bring your spiral around tighter, and then go to the bigger lines and let it curve on down because then you end up with a with a spiral about halfway around to the top, then it will finish going the rest of the way around in this bottom part. So you can mix and match these distances. And like I said, if you if you start out at the top with a with a spiral like this and then go into the long ones, it's just going to it'll come out off the top and then just go into a gradual curve. And it is better for the eye and everything else. 
because if you keep this same spiral at the top, it just doesn't quite look right when it comes in. But that's one of the main reasons I brought this, just to show you um, that you can spiral like this. Now, another thing you could do with this one, uh, before you hollow it out, turn your, turn your shape close to what you want, okay? Draw your lines out, take a, a router or a, uh, a router with a, with a cutter bit on it, uh, or a slot cutter they call it, it's a, it's a carbide bit that's got three teeth sticking out, that's what I use. And go through here and cut this down in, just cut your spirals down in, and cut them fairly deep. They don't have to be real deep, but fairly deep. Then when you go through and start hollowing it out, you're going to start breaking through on these spots and you're going to end up with, with a spiraled piece that comes down and it'll start opening up. In other words, cut your slots down in like this and then when you hollow the thing out on the inside, you're going to have open slots in this all the way through. Mm -hmm. Okay, But when you do that, mm -hmm. you got to make sure that inside is even because if you got real thick here and thin up here it's going to show in a hurry because you can see through it but you can really end up with some interesting designs when you do that but are you talking about completely penetrating that piece mm -hmm. you cut the flukes down deep into this right. and then when you hollow the inside out it'll cut through and then you can you'll have an open pattern in here you'd almost have to do the hollowing completely before you do no the, no break no well you, if they are if they're just hanging out in midair well you don't go clear to the end uh, so the end is holding it together so the end is holding it together so yeah. if if the ends are still touching suppose you go an entire circle around and the ends are still fastened you can actually take some off on the inside mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's not good. Look up. It's not Stuart a Stuart Mortimer. You gotta be good. Do a search on Stuart Mortimer. Okay. Yeah. He um, he's like <coughs> or big Hunter. Big. Yeah, Hunter does. There's some in the AAW uh, journal this month or last this month. This is one of the things I was trying to get done before I came tonight, but I didn't quite get it done. Yeah, he does it pretty regular. But, yeah, you can cut down in and then just start hollowing it out. But like I said, you've got to have it nice and even on the inside, and then when you sand it, you can actually lap this, this sandpaper down around, and you can just sit there and sand it back and forth and do each one of them strips that way. Very attractive stuff, but it won't hold water. Yeah, definitely will not hold water. Now, one thing you cannot do... We got to fall afterwards. One thing you cannot do is the crosshatch thing, because it... You end up with big holes. <laughs> a whole pile of holes. <laughs> pile of holes. But you see what I'm saying on this? Like I said, if you if you put the lines closer together, it's going to be a more gradual curve than you do if you put the lines further apart. And the best thing to do is once you get your shape, is take some chalk or something like that and draw the thing out. And then you can see what it's going to look like. But when you hollow, if you cut down deep enough and you hollow it out, you just got to be careful because things will start coming apart in a hurry. You got to turn your speed down a little bit once you start hollowing it out because centrifugal <coughs> force will blow that thing apart. You end up with a couple of advantages. You make it uniform thickness because if you can see it, the chips come out. You don't have yeah, to chips come out by themselves. <laughs> Sometimes when you don't want them to. Okay, and like I said earlier, you can you can spiral just about anything. This is something I just seen, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, this is just a little plate that I roughed in today, and what we're going to do is. Here, just, Now this is the bottom of the plate, this is the top, okay? We've got ten on both sides. If we
If we basically do the same thing that we did before, let me get some lines marked here real quick. Uh, Now I'm marking all 12 of these segments, but I don't miss any this time. Just on the end here. What are those concentric marks about on your wheel? Under your, un, under your layout wheel, you've got concentric uh, circles. Oh, I just, I don't know why I put them there. I put them there, and I guess because they had to be someplace. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was easy to cut them off on the bandsaw when I did that. Okay. <laughs> Amazing forethought. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Now, if I line this up somewhere close to center, okay, and you see the lines I got around here, I'm going to do every other line into here. luck you'll come out even. Should. Okay. Did every other line, right? We turn it on and we're just going to put some... squared on there. It's not too late. Okay. For show purposes, that's good enough. Okay, now if we come out here and do these lines again. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of them here and then I'll show you what they look like. 